Um, yeah. And once again, like, as opposed to the most recent Ghostbusters, which was a remake, kind of, or a reimagining, yeah. the female yeah, one, I don't know, I, I don't, I, I enjoyed it fine, but once again, like we said, it didn't really have the tone of the original, where this one seems to have some more of it, although we won't really be able to tell until we watch the movie, you know what I mean? Um, there is some uh, talk that I guess uh, a lot of the original cast was coming back. I heard Sigourney Weaver's in there. Bill I mean, Mark. I wouldn't doubt it. Obviously, they um, already gave the teaser for uh, yeah, towards Bill. the very end, yeah. For Which him, I'm, yeah. I mean, at some point, man, we gotta start like looking, looking at it as when is when is his last movie coming? Because he is getting up there in age. Yeah, I mean, I I already think of when I saw him last, which was. For me, like Zombieland Two or something, I don't even remember. Um, um yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm excited for it to see where yeah. it's gonna go, and uh, I was excited for it for last year because it's supposed to come out last summer, but uh, we'll finally get it. Um, yeah, yeah. I At least this, things this are Thanksgiving. Uh, I already Thanks. forgot what the release date was that it said. I think yeah, yep, this November. So yes, Thanksgiving. Okay. So that um, that'll be cool. I'm I'm interested in it because one. I mean, after a year of no content, everything is kind of, like, not good, but, like, good to see. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's good to see. It's also good to see that some of these projects didn't just, like, you know, disappear in the wind. Um, although, after they made the whole project, there'd be no reason not to release it, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, if it was already finished last year, you might as well put it out. I'm looking forward to it. It looked really cool because it had, obviously, a lot of nods to the old movie. With uh, a bunch of the equipment and the ghosts and the Stay Puff marshmallows and I like those. Those are pretty cool. I actually yeah, they, uh, that was the pretty... Hasbro's coming out with some little uh, yeah. vinyl, put little mini puffs for you guys, and they're gonna come in those little cases that were in the movie. That like the display for the... That's <laughs> when cool. you open they should, I hope. Up. I wonder if they'll come with like the little thing of chocolate and graham cracker. I don't know. Looks... Yeah, some of them were all like different. Like little, they were doing all some crazy. Yeah, you have to check them out. Like all yeah, the different those versions. Are, those sound pretty that. cool. Um, I do wonder, um, just seeing some of the special effects, how they're going to go with it, especially being like however many years later, you know what I mean? 30 years Definitely. later. I mean, the, it looks different. That's for sure. than the, even the, the reboot with all yeah. the girl class, it, it, it definitely has a different aesthetic to it. This one feels like it's more creepier. Um, and then it just looks more kind of like that realism to it as well. To me, at least it feels like, um, which is yeah. the old ones were kind of like too, but they, couldn't do it in cgi with the movie. yeah old school. i feel like the old uh -huh. ones also played off of a lot of which you see it a lot in this when as you see those designs which were you know what i mean obviously everything they had was like homemade uh and like even though it was high tech like the one dude kept was the dude putting it together right they weren't buying this stuff at the store so i really like that you can see like a lot of the parts are exposed right on the outside it doesn't have like a nice clean casing and then there's still, it looks like, rocking the old van with some modifications, obviously, and some new tech incorporated. I don't know. It looks good. I'm excited for it. Uh, then again, I'm, I'm fairly easy to please. So, Yeah, they uh, they for sure got uh, a lot of Kenner. Because uh, I told you, they're doing a lot of old school toys. So the Ghostbusters Kenner toys are all kind of in Walmart stores right now. So they have the, they just had now for the Walmart Con exclusive, the Ghostbusters um car from that um from the old kenner line too as well okay. um they have all the original uh, retro characters um all the original pretty much yep yeah, they're just doing everything <laughs> from that line it looks like that's cool i mean it's really cool to see them coming i hope my my big wish is and i know it's probably not the case but my big wish was that kids would actually were were the ones probably getting these at least some of them because i mean obviously video games and things have gotten so advanced and cool etc now but man there was especially as a young child from like one to like five something about just like having those toys or like action figures and and being able to like see them from the cartoon to real life there's some pretty funny ones there is one um that was basically a a toilet ghost <laughs> so i had the big that nasty sounds... coming yeah. out and had the big old bulging eyes on the top and um that one they had um 
another like purple green ghost monster they had the marshmallow man uh back kenner from that one they're going they're going all in with the, the ghostbusters line That's and cool. then they got the uh the six inch line that they did um from the original ghostbuster movie so they did all those guys the original uh, bill murr all the sigourney weaver was even in there and they even had like a build a figure <laughs> for it so you build like one of those little demon dog characters on a uh, member for that was like from the statue and then they came alive yeah yeah i do remember so that was one of the build the figures and then again they're doing the uh little kids now from this new movie line they have their own action figures coming out and they're all in their suits ready to go <laughs> um so I'm, I'm curious to see where that's gonna go I, I know it did pretty fairly well that line and then um so yeah there's there's a big uh, ghostbuster fan base for sure still out there <laughs> oh yeah i mean it's definitely one of those and it's weird to say, because usually when you say, like, cult following, like, it's a movie that did not do well, but still has a lot of, like, decent fan yeah. base. But Go Ghostbusters was not that way, from what I remember. I think Ghostbusters did actually do pretty well at the box office and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, one of those great. Yeah, so, there's, um, if you ever want to check, has... too, there's um, the movies that made us. They did uh, an episode on the Ghostbusters. Okay, stuff. cool. Just check it out. It's just I love watching those things. It's really interesting to see like I've really got to get into them. Went up in. But I've just been getting like through all the other stuff I got to watch. So like I've been doing stuff like that. So for instance, I did the appendices for uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, oh, which okay. are just these huge fucking three-hour movie things on how was the movie made and translated from the book. So I love seeing stuff like that. I just gotta like sit down and put it on my list because there's always so much shit to watch. Uh, what um, else? Oh, they, so, they actually, before I forget, they actually did s okay. uh, something exactly similar for the uh, new Marvel TV shows on Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah, the, what was it called? Assembled, right? Yeah, yeah. Marvel and Assembled. And then there's, they also just released, I think we talked about it a little bit, but they released the Legends or whatever, the little nine-minute shorts that was just, like, each character. Um, yeah, 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 I've seen those two as well. Yeah, those are, uh, yeah, those are pretty interesting. I think it's cool, and it's something that's nice to give on, like, a streaming platform where, like, that's it was not... nice to catch up on, like, just because oh, yeah. I forgot a lot of things, too, and it was really nice oh, yeah. to kind of start from zero all the way to where we're at now on this. Absolutely. It, it was cool. I thought, I just, I like little things like that, especially considering that, and no offense to them, I'm glad that they're doing it how they're doing it, which is they're investing a lot of time, money, and energy in one show at a time, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but because of that, their content really, relatively speaking, output-wise, is not that high. Like, you know, we'll yeah. get, like, one thing a week, max. Mm -hmm. um, and then some. sometimes we'll get, you know, a drop of, like, a MODOK here or, like, a side project that's not really MCU, but kind of MCU adjacent or it's <coughs> a Fox show or something or, you know, all this random stuff. But yeah, exactly. I, I would love to see them continue with this quality and slowly build towards more content. You know what I mean? If if everything goes well. I don't know. I think they've been doing well, though. So for now that we're on Marvel, uh, how, what was your thoughts on Loki season finale? Uh, it was pretty interesting. I mean, there were it certain helped, things. It opened up a lot of gates, basically. I, I liked much. it. I, the only thing I didn't like was the way the, some of the story was framed. In the sense that um, I'm trying to do it without giving away too much, you know, if this, I mean, it's been a couple weeks now, but I don't want to give spoilers away too, too quick on it. But uh, my, my problem wasn't with any of the characters or any of their actions or any of that stuff, but with the way like the music and the pacing of the story framed it as uh, Sylvie kind of making a mistake, which when you think about it logically is just as ridiculous as the whole keeping the timeline in check thing the yeah that kind of yeah that, that it basically needed to be done because the whole timeline in check thing was even beyond that all right let's take the stuff we saw already right like at the end without trying to spoil anything nothing changed right when when we see loki again nothing has changed in the mm -hmm. grander aspect of how the TV functions, right? None of that, except for now they know who they work for. Yeah. 
So yeah. for me, even the stuff that they showed was not indicative of like, oh, this was a mistake. But they had framed it the whole time of her, right, leading up to it as like, oh, maybe this isn't the right idea. Maybe this is a mistake, which maybe it was. Who knows? But the 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 point being that uh, you with the whole multiversal thing, you don't know. There's infinite possibilities of right you know this guy's like oh it would have led to infinite multiversal destruction one i don't know can you trust this guy <laughs> and what he yeah. said and what he says um but even beyond that right like sure it possibly could but realistically speaking right um the infinite possibilities kind of nullify each other right it always balances out to zero if you can go to a negative infinity and positive infinity, what's the middle point? Zero. So it's it's usually not a huge shift in paradigm. It's it it was just funny to me because the whole rest of the show they had kind of framed it, you know, and I felt like they wanted to do it with a twist, but they didn't show the results of that twist in a convincing way at the end. You know what I mean? It would have been different had they been like. I don't know. Everybody's in collars or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like or change. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm wondering how this. Because I mean, who was saying something? Um, the person who plays Wanda. I forget. I always forget her name. Uh, it's I Olsen. always call her one of the. Uh, I always call her one of the Olsen. Yeah, she is. I think it's Elizabeth. <laughs> I only remember because yeah. I literally uh, just watched the first um, episode of that. Yeah, assembly. she was saying that. Uh, that. Uh, I guess Doctor Strange is for sure going like way dark and. That, which is um, cool i mean i'm really we, crazy with this movie like because she says yeah. something we've never seen so far in the marvel well, well you know they always say things like yeah, that but well and they're yeah, usually I'm, I'm like, like half and half of the time they're yeah. right like yeah. not all the I time mean, right strange that came out was seriously something well never like really honestly seen. if you if you hit every movie on the marvel timeline right like iron man was already groundbreaking and revolutionary for a superhero film for years yeah. right like there was nothing quite like it and then the very release of the next Marvel movie itself, making the cinematic universe, was itself a landmark. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Batman beat it to the sequel accomplishment, but otherwise Iron Man 2 would have gotten the first right sequel of a superhero movie in its own universe. Like, there's always these little things where you could be like, well, yeah, there's not everything, right? Like, Thor 2 was... Yeah, there was a couple. Eh, yeah, like I said, there there are some bad movies, right? Like, and and here's my thing: even the bad movies are not terrible, right? They're yeah, they're terrible. bad they're just like, eh. Marvel movies, so they're like sixes and fives as opposed to like threes and fours, which you definitely get some movies on threes and fours. Yeah, um, but I don't know. I th- I th- definitely I want to see more. Yeah, I guess I'm just more curious about how Loki now will play it now ripple effect into these these movies now of doctor strange well and, and uh, even in addition to that loki's the first se- first show to get its confirmed second season so yeah that wasn't supposed to happen they said it was supposed to be just a one a one off yeah and i think they had designed all of them for that but obviously loki was it, just, it i don't know I about in totality great. but for me the very first episode of loki was like the perfect premiere episode for me it it's had good so I my favorite it. episode was the when President Loki came in. All oh, oh yeah, it's not my no. favorite episode. It's just for me a perfect example of a first episode. Yeah, yeah. In that it, dro- it yeah it has good connections to its op- its content, very good emotional displays, very good comedy, good setting, story structure for long term. Right, like it was a story that's written in a way that it can be finished in six episodes or extend it out as far as possible because it's a multiversal concept so it's right like they could fight every version of kang under the sun every season it would be awful if they did that but but yeah uh, yeah i, I i'm um, excited yeah i'm curious if we'll see like a different variant of him of well, the version of like the one that oh, yeah. you know kind of we yeah know i don't of. yeah i don't think there's gonna being be this, uh yeah, kind of uh, yeah, I, 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 I think yeah, that was, was my kind of only thing. Kind of his, yeah, I was trying to figure out his attitude. Yeah, like quirky, I guess. Yeah. Say um. Well, and and here's the thing, I'm sure other people are gonna be bad, bad, bad about it. And once again, I'll say this with 
with very very few exceptions the he who remains is not like any other incarnation of kang to ever exist in terms of personality yeah obviously yeah. he kind of serves as the functional role of a mortis but uh the mortis doesn't act like that what's funny is that marvel still really isn't confirming that it is him but us comic people are like yeah we know it's him but they're still saying like well his name is still uh, uh what do they call the he who remains is one of the titles of kang they, or they, of immortus that's one of so, his titles is he who remains at the end of time so i'm i'm curious how the other playing uh it's cool though I'm, i really, I really no, like no 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 and i'm not against it and that's what i was gonna say is even though he's obviously different than any other mostly any other version of kang and i want to specify that because there was one version of kang i re recently read in the doctor doom run that shares some slight similarities in the sense that he's a little wackier uh but what His the reason coming out as well i'm i'm super excited for kang's book i love kang and once again that that kang by the way that was in doctor doom's book has been my favorite kang Oh, nice. Easily. Hope... Easily. It's so good. Uh, there's a lot of good in that Doctor Doom run. I, I keep using it for the memes, but it's actually a good story, too. But what I, I did want to say about it was I accepted the personality because it made sense. Okay. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, once again, if he's just a guy, which was a whole nother thing, but if he really is just a guy, right, your mind can't handle that. Like, you you can't handle all the p vast, infinite possibilities of the universe. Your brain would explode. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I, I could get into even the math and science of it, but literally nothing like that could exist in, in a space-time universe, right? Like, so it makes sense that he's a little off, and that after having seen everything and being tired of kind of just replaying the same... Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. You I, would I was cool with it, yeah. Yeah, no, that that makes totally sense to me. I I was totally fine with it too yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so we can I guess go on from there. But uh, there was some more trailers that came out that uh, we could have shown besides the Ghostbusters, but the uh, Chucky TV series trailer finally came really? out. Really? Okay. Sci-fi uh, collaboration. There's been so much coming out. And it's so great. Uh, that's that gonna be cool. October twelfth. Um, it looks pretty it, good. Is it? I can't remember what the base is. This was was wasn't wasn't on his family, was it? No, this it's just kinda, him, right? Uh, yeah. I, it, doesn't, it feels like it's not really taking place after any of the more recent movies, uh, like the Call the Chucky and all that. Yeah, no, no, that's. It kind of just seemed. It, it just it's seems just about this little yeah. boy who uh, ends up finding the doll and you know, um, collects old retro stuff. He says, "She says you, you like vintage," and he's like, "No, it's retro." And she's like, "What's the difference?" He's like, eh, "It's ten bucks cheaper." <laughs> so he, he gets it anyways, and so. Uh, he kind of uh, gets funny. bullied around this kid, and so the the Chucky doll kind of ends up, you know, messing with all the kids, and that's why he kind of goes along with it. It seems like. I um, I think it. I mean, that sounds interesting. I I always yeah. found it interesting because Chucky was always this kind of semi character of a scary person. You know well, what I mean? The like first movies are actually very cheesy if you really watch them. No, absolutely. I mean, I've never yeah. watched them. This is like, yeah, some of the scenes are like mm. No, I mean it's but, cool, man. Like but, but, I like the ones after the Bride of Chucky. That's when they kinda took a more ninety ish yeah. dark darker oh, absolutely. style. Absolutely. And like and the eighties ones weren't bad. They were just stylized, right? Like they they were ideas and right, like and that's why I said like he is a caricature of like he is not like Michael Myers or Freddy Krueger, and that's no offense to him. He has a personality, right? Mm -hmm. Chucky has a personality that has been established and makes an effect on the story uh, one way or another. I think the original voice actor sounded like his voice, but I think he is on for this one as well. So it won't be Mark Hamill who did the, the last movie that they did not too long ago. Uh, it was just a totally reboot of the whole series anyways because yeah. it wasn't a boo doll. It was a... Yep, Animatronic, yeah. I mean, I didn't mind that one either, although... I fine too. I, like yeah. I said, I like his new spins on things. It's totally fine with me. You know, I'll watch it. That's Once again, okay. it, if the story is good, it, it's kind of my thing on that, the Death Note adaption or whatever. Like, is it an awful adaption of Dead Note? Death Note? Absolutely. Is it a bad story in itself? 
No, it's fine. If you've never seen Death Note before, it's a fine story. I love it, yeah. I mean, uh, I've had tons of people, every... yeah. And once again, there were, like, there are changes and differences, etc. But, like, as long as you're not comparing it to the original Death Note, just fine. It's when yeah. you start making that comparison, it's awful. <laughs> uh, oh, this is kind of sad news. So Arthur, after 25 years, or, uh, or after, sorry, the 20, uh, 25th season, this is going to be their last and final season after winter 2022. Wow. Uh, so there will be no more Arthur on PBS. That's uh, cr- wow. Wait, why did they decide to stop? You know, I've been hearing PBS has been having some difficulties trying to stay alive um, because it is a free network channel. Yeah. Right? Well, and the um, problem is in addition to the, right, like PBS is now having to compete with YouTube yeah, and, and all that. Yeah, all these uh, things. So. so, you know, yeah, I, I guess that that's the only thing I can think of because I have heard in recent years that they've been struggling. So I don't know if they just... That's, and that's really rough, man. On Arthur because maybe that's their most produced, you know, you know, most, you know, production and the money because even they changed the it went the from art you know, style, yeah, oh, yeah. Fine to like a C uh computer uh, digital style. Yeah, and... just something easier to produce and time wise. So, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, so I mean, it's kind of sad. It it's but... just sad for us because I think when we and were Panera. kids, yeah, well, and we got to think of it in different ways, right? Like. You got to remember when we were kids, right? That was the only education for kids. There was yeah. no real internet until we got to like nine or 10, or if you were in a, like a, I guess a better off house or at the library yeah. or something, but like home internet at home wasn't really a thing until the end of the nineties. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when then blues clues kind of was the first mm-hmm. one to kind of right, start doing where it was these... educational, more TV and mm-hmm. then it, yeah, started kind of going from there. But yeah, like, yeah, you're right. Pretty much. It was really that honestly. Yeah. For and so while. for, yeah, for a long time we had like Sesame street and all, you know, just all these other classic free kind of that things. Was strong Sesame. Oh yeah. But it's also, I, I mean, think... it's with HBO now, so yeah, they got so... money there. So, yeah. <laughs> and it's a bigger property, I guess. Sesame's I think got more, well, it. Sesame Street's also on that kind of like half and half, like the Muppets, where sometimes it's they slip in the adult humor or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, there was a new trailer too for the new Zack Snyder um, produced prequel of his Army of Dead. It's called The Army of Thieves. And yeah. if you were guys a big fan of the, uh, I forget his name, but the guy who was the vault picker. He, uh, is, this is based on him. So, and I was, I, I liked him. He's pretty, he's hilarious to me. <laughs> I, I still gotta go watch Army of the Dead. You gotta game, watch so. it. Check it out. Check it out. You'll like it. I really enjoyed it. It was something different. I mean, I like things like, you know, it's, like I said, you get bored of the same kind of zombie movie. Like, oh yeah, they're chasing you. They eat you. And they, this was different. I liked it. They, they, he tried to make it where they kind of were a little bit more intelligent, you know, like not all of them. But there was certain like hybrids that were like way more intelligent than the other ones, and they were communicating with each other. And yeah, so again, I, I thought it was more different, interesting. So I'm curious on where this is gonna go. But this is before even all the the zombies and everything yeah. take place. So I think this is kind of gonna be just like more of a, I don't know, just a grand spy movie or a thief movie. I don't know, <laughs> or like Ocean Eleven kind of type movie. We'll see. Um, Let's see. I know there's now a Blade Runner animated movie that's coming out too for uh, Toonami. Okay. Uh, I didn't that trailer just that. dropped. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of He Man stuff that got dropped. I heard yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, a lot yeah. of toys, a lot of just. Yeah, everything. I mean. I know that they were trying to review bomb his uh, thing, and he even came back and just said, just grow up. <laughs> The, the people I kept seeing complain, every complaint was the exact same. And it was, why is there so much deal? And I'm like, okay. Well, well and then I guess they kind of try, people try to say, it doesn't say, honestly, he, man. It says the Masters of the, the Universe. Yes, it absolutely does. And the original Masters of the Universe did feature other characters from time to time. Believe it or not, it wasn't all just Prince Adam by himself. And then plus the second season, it's <laughs> not to say that it's going to be... I mean, maybe. regardless, the problem is once again, people expecting something from a movie that one they were never promised, right? No one ever promised this was going to be all about He Man. They just said it was going to be a remake of the old He Man series. Continuously, mm-hmm. they said that. 
they used a lot of the characters that really did. No, get I mean it looked. It, it. I mean, and I'm gonna say this basically unequivocally. I'm waiting. I have been waiting for Kevin Smith to make something that's just absolute garbage. But even his garbage films are better than some of the fucking things that come out Tusk. today. I'll be talking about Tusk. Yeah, but he, once again, Tusk is <laughs> still like if you look at Tusk as like a weird ass horror movie, it's pretty good. Like it's got yeah, a very like, typical there's, horror movie there's ending. Are like, no, don't ever show me Tusk again. <laughs> right, and if, and if that's not the the epitome of a horror movie, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Um, How, like I said, it it, it kind of reminded me in a very different vein, but to like Irreversible or this other thing where it's a much more cerebral type of like disquietation than a, uh, yeah. you know, a typical horror. Bruh, bruh, bruh. And that's that's the thing. And once again, even if you go to like his other one, which I would consider really rough, which is. Um... <sighs> oh, Clerks 3 is coming out. Now yeah, I did see that. Man. I did see that. He's talked about them. Well, he'd been talking about. um the filming the and like they had extras shoots and it calls for extras. I, I follow heavily for that, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, there was another one. It's like the one with his original yoga hosers, which is probably his well, worst I one. I really like that one. You know what? No. And, it's just and that's his daughter. Honestly, is not that great of an actor. I didn't think just, anybody in that. I think the whole movie itself was not a great idea. It but was not, it was even not as bad. even as a bad movie, right? It basically just fits into it, the eighties, uh, the eighties genre. Like if you told me that was an eighties movie not directed by Kevin Smith, and it, it was, was his daughter the, that did that one. Oh uh, yeah, but but you, uh, she did help, but he's still the director and writer of that movie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he helped him most of it. But yeah, he supposedly um, that was her first kind of like. That's her Doing first good. film acting, ever. That's her first acting gig. Uh, no, like she her. had one other acting yeah, gig, and she's sure. been. She okay. She's had acting gigs since then. She was in that one weird remake of like the Manson Killings that I can't remember the name of. I did remember seeing that. Um, which was funny because she's like the one chick who doesn't go to the fucking house. But but regardless, uh, like I said. If you if you told me that Yoga Hosers was just an '80s movie and didn't tell me who made it or when it was released, I would just believe you. It's it's made in the '80s format. It, you could put it right along like killer clowns from space. You know what I mean? In the level of like ridiculousness, bad acting. That's my, that's my love. I, 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 I like I, the movie, but that's the and obviously it's not anywhere near as good as Killer Clowns of Space. But if you were to break down the film aspects oh, of it, yeah. it's very, yeah. very similar. Um, um, there's talks about Killer Clowns too, supposedly now. That's funny. <laughs> but like, yes, bring it back. I like Killer Clowns. I I thought they were trying to bring it back at some point, but I then think they were trying to bring the rights back. Like they're trying to get the rights back. Yeah, to I hate. I'm not gonna lie. It's even as an artist uh, or a musician or whatever, I hate fucking copyright laws in this country. They're so bad for so many reasons just so bad like they're not made well in a lot of ways um so also too there is also a new dragon ball super movie coming out i think yeah. it's supposed to be coming out next year the title hasn't been announced here i think but they did show us like a little clip and some people are kind of already getting mad because it was all cgi the clip so a lot of people are going like well is this is this film going all cgi now and uh, there was already some like uh i love it that was thrown online that you can clearly tell that it's not like a cgi style it's like that digital animation style still um and they're already teasing us with like a new krillin look they're teasing us with pan finally and an older look because i think they we got pan in like a last movie i can't remember but she's still like a baby still yeah. yeah but so we'll finally have older pan um, and then we got like a different look for Piccolo, but that's all they've shown us so far, uh, for the movie and, and not, nothing really. We don't know what it's about. No, no, just title. Um, no, nothing really. Just know it's coming. And Akira, uh, Toriyama is, uh, working on it too as well. So I find it so funny that the first big thing is like immediately after that is a big, it's like, Oh, new Dragon Ball Z or super movie. Grumble, grumble, grumble art instead of why thank you for continuing to make me content after fucking 40 years. <laughs> Assholes. It's I like, literally. 
I don't know. The, the, I, the don't get me uh, super because it's like, like I said. I, I thought they really got lazy on the the super show towards because the show, yeah. But the movie, the last movie they made, oh, movie was great. Oh, That's right. God. So why I don't get why people people are like immediately like, wait, did we forget already that they literally had just won in a fucking award for this shit? Like, watch the movie and then give your opinion. I just don't understand how hard that is. And once again, it pisses me off because literally when there's not a movie news being released or there's not news of a show being released, all mm-hmm. I hear is, oh, when are they going to bring more Dragon Ball Super? When is another season coming? When do I get another fucking movie? When it... This wow. is why you don't get a fucking movie. <laughs> this is why you don't get another fucking movie, you self-entitled assholes. And... Uh. and I don't know. That one pisses me off because I could see if you had seen the movie and the animation was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then complain. It's literally not even made yet. Uh It's like looking at someone's sketches and being like, well, that looks like garbage. It's not finished. (laughs) It's not finished. It's like your car looks like shit. Well, it's just a fucking frame right now. So I would hope so. I just don't get that shit, man. Like, yeah. you know, just people always have the uh, complaint about something. Or yeah, something. Pretty, I don't know. and don't get me wrong. I, if there's something to legitimately complain about, I mean, go for it. But once again, this is an issue that is not even an issue yet. This is no. months or even a year from becoming a possible issue. If it is an issue, mm-hmm. it's just so dumb to me. <laughs> it, it's not like right when we saw the uh, commercial for Sonic and everyone was like, well, that looks like garbage. Yeah, no. it did look like garbage. It absolutely did. And it was the final product. That was, That's what they said. This is going to be what it looks like in the movie, right? So then mm-hmm. we said it looked like shit and they changed it and it looked better. But this, like I said, it's just like this isn't even that. This isn't the the trailer or the final or the thing. This is like, hey... Psst, I have something for you. Check out what I'm going to make next year. Yeah. That looks exactly. like garbage. You shouldn't even make it. <laughs> exactly. Stop. Shoot yourself. That, and that's literally how these people online are. They're just like the worst human beings alive because they can do things online without getting punched in the face. Um, <laughs> some of the other things that are coming out that I'm super excited for. This is fine. They said for sure this is the final movie, which I'm pretty sure it is because they are getting pretty up there in age. But uh, this will be Jackass forever. This movie coming out this year, I, I think October. I did uh, see the, and then they they'd been interviewing Knoxville about it because he's like fifty or yeah, 51 he's gonna be now? He he's forty nine. He said he's gonna be fifty. Yeah, so, so. That, that's what uh, Steve-O was saying in the trailer. He's like, don't worry. They say that as long as you, uh, you don't have a concussion before you're 50, you're all good. And Knoxville's 49. <laughs> I, like, oh. I, I mean, I like the guys. My, I would have hoped, as, and I mean, I guess, who, who could they have possibly found to do something like that? But I would have hoped that they would have like trained the next generation of jackasses well, to take I, over yeah, for them and... They could have I, I introduced think, them last movie and then put them in this movie and then the next. You know what I mean? I just think we're in a different era of like people I mean, probably just. I don't know. I don't know, they, man. I don't think. Just, I don't think because Jackass. You know how people are though. Not like the, I'm just saying. Like you know, people are being that woke term is like, oh, that's no, you can't. I mean, do people that. can people can be as woke as they want, but boxing, fighting, and all these other things still are some of the highest selling right. runs of like. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's, and once again, this is something I can tell you just from like the studies of comedy and writing and stuff. Uh, slapstick will never die. Yeah, no, exactly. Slapstick I mean, I has never, <laughs> it, it has never gone out of style in the 80 plus or 100 plus almost or 100 years of film now, 1920s. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I since, said Cha- Cha- Chaplin. Yeah, three since six. Chaplin, you can draw an unbroken line of slapstick comedy through every decade, all the way up to today. There, there has been a major slapstick comedy, and Jackass is just the 90s, 2000s version of slapstick, which is pain. And maybe it's just too that the, our generation is like, oh, I'm not that stupid. I'm not going to do anything like that. 
which is <laughs> I also find ridiculous because once again, people are stupid and yeah. will most likely remain stupid. No, no so, offense to anybody. Uh, they did for bring myself. some new people though on there. Uh, I did see Eric Andre was on there, so I was like, "Oh, that's so, so funny." Yeah, Eric, that, and that's Eric Andre yeah, he's like, definitely in that back. kind of vein, right? Like, and the cool thing is, Eric Andre is a little new school, right? It's not just physical comedy or this. He does a lot of other weird disquiet. Like, not saying I'm a huge Eric Andre fan or anything. I think he's interesting. In uh, I was always a fan of the show. I don't know why. I, I just like. I, I, just I can't the do show. the show. I can do cuts, right? Like I can do short amounts, but I don't think his um, comedy style works well in a thirty-minute format. You know what you gotta watch? Watch his movie. It actually won some awards. Uh, Bad Trip. I think a movie would be all right for him because once again, like it's an uninterrupted hour and a half. Watch, but, watch Bad Trip. Yeah. You'll like it. I, oh. And I, I like uh, Tiffany was in it. Too. I forget the last name, but uh, she's she's Had in it too. Uh, yeah, she. She's like the um, one that's in jail, and they like they take her car, and then she ends up breaking out of jail, and she's like, "Where's my car?" <laughs> so she just starts chasing them. She's like the hood uh, person from breaking out. Yeah, it, it's pretty funny. They, he does the yeah, same thing, kind of like it's a jackass kind of type movie, but it's yeah, like one of but, those ones where it's like a Borat kind of type style. Right, and so it's just like all media, right? Like since the Three Stooges, it evolves. So I mean, and like Eric Andre, I think is the perfect like candidate to kind of move, keep moving that style of con- comedy forward. They even used one of his um, his pranks that he had on the show because there's this one where uh, his friends had come over and they pressed the doorbell, and it's literally like this airbag that just goes like this, like a punch, boom, and then they go and they go flying. Oh yeah, they and have so that in they, three. They, um, yeah, oh, you know, you're right. They, how did I think yeah, about. It? I think they did have, yeah, they did have that. I do remember yep. that. Yeah, and no, they no, did no. that one a couple uh, in three actually. They did a big penis, and then a, like they didn't do a punch though. I mean, it I think that's what it was. It was they made it into a big, uh, and his is just a plain old airbag <laughs> show. But no, still, but that's it was it's pretty, still like, funny. I mean, yeah, but well, um, and yeah. I actually think an airbag might be worse because of like the definitely, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, like I said, I like that. I'm glad to hear it. I want to see what they're doing. I just hope they don't kill themselves making it. Out, like, trailer. It was a uh, they're. <laughs> They're they're for sure not uh, going down. They're turning down on this one. But I, they said for sure in a lot of the interviews that this is this is it for them. They, they're they too old, be- man. They're they're at the age where you start breaking bones without doing shit like that. So uh, and uh, what also is kind of sad was like you know Bam Margera won't be joining back, but he you know he's been kind of digging himself into a hole for a while. And the, the yeah, guys, I mean, yeah, come out by doing like um, an intervention. He didn't want to do it and. Yeah, it just it yeah they they just kind of don't they don't talk to him anymore now just because he he did some pretty stupid things <laughs> now. I mean he it's had sad. some rough yeah I mean and there's yeah I mean, obviously... he lost his best friend I mean I understand yeah. that but like it's rough himself. man like I'm not gonna make comments on him because I don't know his his life and stuff but yeah. uh, I mean I'm not surprised you know what I mean that he's not in this one even if there wasn't he looks like now he's like overweight now. oh he's yeah like... dude he and he has been for since. Right, basically, like a month after that, they they had released. I remember I watched this little documentary that they did, like not too long. I think it was like a year or two ago, and yeah, he yeah he was just not doing great. In there. No, um, but, well, and then it wasn't just um, didn't his dad die too or something? Oh, you know, no, it wasn't his dad. It was the other. Yeah, it was his uncle Vito. His uncle, and it wasn't even. Oh, but you know what? He got in trouble because of Vito uh, had some child other sh- pornography yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, but he ended up dying though. Yeah, I do remember he did die. But yeah, it um, like I said, it wasn't just one thing, and I'm and I'm not like excusing whatever he may or may not have done to them. But I what I mean is like I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't in it, even if his friend had. You know what I mean? Like, even if yeah. they were still good and he wasn't having problems, you know, he might have just waved it out because yeah, yeah, it's just rough times, man. But, but uh, oh, uh, Pokemon live action uh, supposed to be shows coming to Netflix. So okay. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, they they did pretty good for uh, Detective yeah, Pikachu. Yeah, oh, so. I like that. Dan. They did a, they, and then you know what's smart was they hired that guy. I don't know if you ever seen. Yeah, the dude who did all the three D art and the yeah. stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. smart. Like they they you know they got one of the because you know he's been doing it for a really long time. So he's like, I I got designs for you guys already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like thinking, it's like, hey, can we just you know buy your portfolio real quick and make you have you make some more up and. No, and I mean it's really cool. I like when they do stuff like that. Like again, that's kind of that behind the mo- movie making stuff yeah. that we talked about. Like, like I said, I would want, I do want to get that uh, behind the 
what, what is it the shows we love or the watch it. it's called the the movies we love and the watch the other one love. that's uh, there's another one they do it's called the toys that we love as the well toys. and that one's oh, that one's great too because they do just they go from all the toy they do barbie they do gi joe they do heat man they do power rangers turtles um hello which, kitty <laughs> which is so there. funny because like 90 percent of them are from like the 80s or the 70s like yeah, well, they did do, like I said, a couple of 90s stuff. Like, they did our Power Ranger toys, which are kind of big yeah. in the 90s. Remember they had those little flip head things? Where yeah. Where they would, like, flip the head and No, and change. I mean, there there always are, but I just think about how many of them, G.I. Joe, Transformers, uh, oh, yeah. TMNT, like, even Hello Kitty, I think, is technically a Japanese 80s, right? Yeah, it's an old property for sure. Yeah, um, I mean, Dragon Ball Z and Hello Excuse Kitty are, like, the same time. So that's how I always keep track of them. Let's see here what else I got. Um, I know uh, there was a bunch of uh, San. We had the San Diego Comic Con at home uh, last weekend, and there was a bunch of uh, exclusive toy drops that came out from NECA, Mezco. Everyone was doing some crazy stuff. Um, NECA was doing the. Uh, I'm excited for the Gargoyles line, so they showed us some more of that. Uh, we got um, we got to see Demora. Or De- I can't. I can never remember her name, but. Um, uh, Elias love uh, yeah, Demona, love Demona. There we go, Demona. Um, so we got to see uh, her action figure coming out. So she looked pretty good. And then, oh, looks like we got Archer coming back too as well yeah. for uh, uh, August twenty fifth. I'm I'm glad we're getting back to the, but it's gonna be sad because we won't have uh, Woodhouse. I don't yeah. know how they're gonna do. No, uh, or not Mallory, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she passed away last year and. I wonder if they're going to just replace the voice or if they're, you know, you never I'm know. Gonna be, they, and here, here's the thing that bothers the shit out of me with the, the voice thing. So in my opinion, there's only two ways. All right. Technically, th- there, there are three ways, but there's only two ways because for some reason, I don't know, maybe companies are lazy or maybe something else. The only two ways to handle that is one, kill the character. <laughs> Yeah, that's I said. Probably that'd be Get, the next thing. It, 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 I don't care. I have. I have never. Ever heard. A voice actor come in and replace somebody and do it seamlessly. Yeah. N- never. never. And <laughs> even people who other people who are like, oh. I I can't tell the difference every time. Mm-hmm. without looking the first time they speak i'm like who's voicing that now like why did they change it like and i I'm... know for one that really i can't get a hold of is like when they redid dragon ball kai and all that and it was redone voice for frieza goat ted also um, had a different voice actor i believe yeah, or, that, that or they just like... did a different voice i wasn't sure yeah, I don't. I think it was a different voice actor because it was definitely not that original one that I had come to love in the the Z and, series. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes voice actors' tones and stuff can change over time, but it's usually slight and and a natural progression. And the so the thing that bothers me is there. So the only two options are to do that or recast them, which is the worst point choice because people will always notice. May, they might not care, but they'll always notice, yeah. and it will never be the same. Yeah. And there is a secret option three that I never understand why they don't do. Get a fucking impressionist. Well, that's what I said. There yeah, are there, some there's people who can. Yeah, there are spot. people, but they never get them to do it. I don't get I it. There are the, people those guys who are on the, literally all the time. Doing I just don't. Yeah, no. Uh, on YouTube, TikTok, and even before that, I mean, impressionism has been a huge comedy slash acting thing for years where people are able to mimic Reagan and, and Clinton and Bush in very, very accurate styles. And so were you to get a very good impressionist, you should mm-hmm. theoretically be able to get a nearly identical voice. But, exactly. uh, you know, they all it never, study that voice but, and get in. Yeah, there's still... Um, and any. there is a, a line to, like, make sure there's somewhat similarness in timber and, like, other things that are hard to control. But I always think of the dude who's, like, the living voice box. Yeah. Uh, I can never remember his name, though. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen yeah. him a couple times online, but, uh, yeah, I he mean, was like in, I said You that. know, he was in Police Academy and all those great old movies. Yeah. But... 
<clears throat> he shows, and I mean, we should already know that your voice can make a, a ridiculously wide variety of noises and like imitate other things and lower and higher. And so I just never know why they don't do that. And it kind of irritates the shit out of me because it's, they did it to like uh, Vic Mignogna, a character that Vic Mignogna was playing, and he has a very distinctive voice. So they pulled somebody else in and they're like, oh, it's so similar. And I'm like, nah, it's not even close. It's literally not even close to the same voice, but okay. Uh, all right, and then um, I know we're kind of getting here to the end too, yeah, but uh, I know. Let's see. Um, I guess go off the list here. So Dead Space is being remade. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited. For that. I'm always been a big fan of the Dead Space series. I'm curious on what studio will be taking uh, that up because I believe the uh it changed studio on the third uh game it was like first or so or something versus i can't remember but um yeah i'm curious on who's gonna take up the the dead space license and we do have a director for blade so that's finally kind of yeah forward. i did hear that <laughs> which i just don't know i mean i i shouldn't say that i'm like why well, don't why well, i don't understand why they're doing this but marvel has a plan so if, yeah. Unless there's rights issues, they're waiting on purpose. Exactly. Um, oh, one big thing I was super excited for that I am going to be backing. Um, pretty expensive price tag, but they are going to be doing a uh, – Hasbro is going to be doing on their new HasLab project that they have planned uh, a Galactus that will be 32 inches tall. <laughs> it will feature um, lights, uh, LED lights on his chest plate, on his forehead, uh, even his earpieces, and then on the back plate too. It will also feature some LEDs. All his fingers will be articulated. Um, he will also be articulated everywhere else. Um, what else were they saying? Um, I think that was oh um, oh three uh, swappable faces. So there's like a kind of like a more just a guess standard face and then there was the more meaner face and then they had the energy drained face um so far i think that was pretty much it that they um got us all excited for and then if you know once they reach a certain amount they will unlock you know new tiers and supposedly they're um going to be giving us two new uh six inch figures to go with him for his you know being his heralds and one of them was a silver surfer and i couldn't tell who the other one was um people already kind of posted up who it looked like but uh, yeah, so hopefully that gets backed up. That's um, supposed to be ending in uh, the middle of August, I think, the the project. And they have to make about, have to have 14,000 backers. And I think they're at like 9,000 right now. It's been open for maybe a good week now. And it's a $400 uh, dollar price tag, though, for it. Which, including yeah, the I ship, mean... probably 450 430 maybe. But still, yeah, I mean, yeah. wow. <laughs> I think... Yeah, I mean, for a 32-inch figure, yeah. It doesn't. Um, so, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, that was that. That was some pretty cool news. And then last few things I have here then is uh, new. Oh yeah, new Pokemon games coming out. Unite. Um, it's a bunch of new toys. If you guys are into toys, check out Hasbro stuff. Neca, Mezco, uh, Mondo even came out with that. Um, <laughs> the um, you know that famous Wolverine meme where he's yeah, I, at... I did see that uh, that figure. So, Mondo's coming out with that, and that that's a pretty big. Thing. I wonder like, how they got the rights to the, like. I guess the no one owns the meme though, right? Like memes are free property, so. At this point, yeah. Um, I bet you the guy so, who made that meme is just like, man. I should. Have <laughs> um, oh, um, Deadpool and Korg, we got to see that little trailer so he's officially in the mcu if you can kind of count that as <laughs> a true video um oh uh did we i don't know if we talked about this but nickelodeon will be coming out with their own smash brother type game um, yeah we so did we had heard trailer. about that yeah um so, yeah and i think that was pretty much a fall my list here let's see i mean i have a couple things but we are running a bit short on time so i'll try to keep them uh short huh. obviously there's uh, the comics have been more or less kind of dead uh, on the Marvel DC side. I mean, obviously, the independent comics kind of just roll independently, so they're always kind of kicking. But um, Marvel and DC, for the most part, have been like a little bit lower, but we're starting to get ready for some big drops, including, I think, uh, what was it? It was Kate's run on Thor? Is Kate yeah, on? Uh, oh, uh, Van uh, sorry, no, Venom. Hulk. Hulk, that's right. It's on Hulk. 
We've got um, the next X Men thing has just kind of kicked in. That, that just dropped, I think, like three weeks ago. I think. Yeah, uh, no, not that re- one. That one's like a mid one, so that one's like leading to something else. Uh, and that that one for the X Men is gonna drop in like a week or two, I think it is. So that'll be interesting. And then there's the Infinite Destinies line that has been running, which was pretty okay. Yeah. I mean, they Dark just need Angel. to get it. Coming up here too, it looks like, um, yeah. which was planned for last year, but yeah, it's coming up. That one, the Darkhold books are coming out as well. Dark Ages and Darkhold kind of sound the same, but <laughs> um, yeah, we'll we'll and we'll see how they run those two kind of side stuff. But the thing is that that before they never had like outside interest from the comic books, and now they're tied into the MCU. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see them get some more movement. I think Marvel yeah. does a really good job at that, where DC kind of... Once again, I, I feel like DC's biggest mistake, both on the side of the comics and the movies, is not giving enough love to the side characters, um, or the characters who wouldn't be considered A-tier, um, with the exception of certain ones that have become A-tier now, like the Suicide Squad, and... Um, I guess Harley Quinn, but she kind of was always pretty popular, so... Although she was before, she was kind of hurt, like connected with the Joker and Batman, and now she's kind of her own. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I want to see more of that. Like uh, they had done a few of them, but Marvel has been doing a way better job at giving people like Modok and Taskmaster and right all these characters who really aren't shit. Right, like even in the comics, Modok and Taskmaster are not that a tier right like they'd be b tier maybe c um and so it's cool to see them get this shine right to see taskmaster get put into a villain role to see modok get his own tv show uh as well as comics for both of them in the comic series and you know what i mean like different little runs so i think that's mostly what i want to cover is that uh you know that there's nothing going on in in marvel and dc side comics there have been some pretty interesting drops here and there for some Ooh, of the independents. Uh, Dean versus vampires is coming out. James Tinian confirmed that. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I've been trying to catch up on. I forget which one of his ones it was. Was it Department of Truth or another one? I mean, the truth is this one. He's doing something killing, the, and those ones are now already. Uh, something killing the children already got picked up now by Netflix and is being created as a show. Uh, Department of Truth is also now being in talks to be made into, I think, a movie or a show. Um, he's got like something even else bigger planned because he's got his own like little studio uh, called uh, Un- Onion Onion or something like Tidy that. Tidy Onion. Yeah, and so he has all his stuff properties coming from there. So um, we'll, we'll see. Maybe he maybe he gets that going even bigger. Yeah. And I mean, I'd, I'd be excited for it. He makes some pretty good stuff. Uh, I do find it interesting because it feels like, and no offense to him, obviously he has a bunch of them running, but like everybody and their mother is just getting their comic or their random title pushed into a show and Mm -hmm. then netflix doesn't push more time into it so it gets one season sometimes like jupiter's legacy and yeah jupiter uh yeah we'll see i hope something will be a different route because i it's got such a hard hard following um there's a facebook page for like i follow that group and like these guys are monster (laughs) for the, the story in the books and they get everything collect everything and um, I, I hope that, yeah, they'll do good on that and they'll just, you know, do good for the fans and, uh, do just a good, a good, uh, TV series yeah. and don't, you know, fall off like they did with Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah. And, my, yeah. And I, I think they'll do story. better. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think they'll do better just cause their production costs won't be as high. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah. even beyond that, um, it's always interesting to me because the problem with shows like those ones uh, specifically, even smaller titles from the big names like Legion or right, they have pretty good followings of their own, right? Like long-standing hardcore fans, and then. But the problem is that uh, they need to like make shows that are also accessible to the public, so that they'll be popular and can make more seasons for a general audience. And so it's always that really rough, like, balance between pleasing current fans and attracting new fans. But uh, I think we're pretty close. I think we could probably call yeah. it. 
Um, if, if there's nothing else we wanted to cover. I got nothing else here. All right, cool. Uh, well, what we are going to do is go ahead and pull up another trailer. What do we want to show them? We can show them the Chucky trailer, maybe. That'd be cool with that. Leave them with some horror. Yeah, there we go. All righty. Well, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time on Comic Convos. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.